Hello, fellow geeks. Welcome to the first book of Stolen Fate, our playthrough of the Pathfinder 2e Adventure Path from Paizo. For this series, we have Chase, that's me, as our intrepid game master. M is the enthusiastic crunk. Katie is the mysterious Ginny. And Tori is the quick-witted Jack. This episode is a bit of a prequel to the rest of the adventure, so that the players can get a shot at playing their level 11 characters and develop some backstory before diving into the main story. We hope you enjoy! Now let's roll! So, uh, we're going to start this adventure uh, with a rogue named Jack, who is on a personal mission of personal business. And uh, before personal we... Mission of personal, personal mission of personal business. Before we uh, get the setting set up, why don't you start us off, Tori? Tell us a little bit about Jack. Give us a physical description. Tell us a little bit about your character. So, Jack is a human... He is actually a changeling, which he does not advertise, but you can tell if you know what to look for in a changeling, which is their um, heterochromatic eyes. He has one normal human looking blue eye, and then his left eye is a bright, vibrant green, almost glowing. Um, otherwise, he looks like a normal human man. He's a rogue, so he of course, is wearing black, um, because that is the requirement. He's got a bandolier across his chest, um, and otherwise looks unarmed, because he has a nice fancy ring that turns his weapons invisible when he's not, uh, using them. And walks around with half a smirk on his face, always looks like he knows some kind of secret he's not sharing with the rest of the class. Um, and yeah. That is Jack. Fantastic. All right. Jack is a high-level adventurer. He's got a lot of adventurers under his belt. Uh, but why don't you tell us a little bit about his current adventure that he's on with his mother? Yes. So uh, he has been looking for his mother for several years, most of his life. Uh, as a changeling, his mother is, of course, a hag. Um and uh, he suspects a green hag because of his eye and also some of the mm, slightly more magical talents he's inherited from her. Um, he did encounter her once as a child uh, when he sort of almost answered the call, which if anyone listening at home doesn't know, the call is the, I don't know, like the magical beacon the subconscious beacon that changelings uh, get at some point in their lives to basically return to their hag parent. Um, and what happens after they answer the call uh, is kind of a black box, um, but it's basically how hags make more hags. So somehow maybe get changed into a hag or sacrificed in some otherwise really dark, bloody, awful ritual. Um, anyway, he almost answered the call as a child uh, but was shaken out of it by his human father. And since then has been looking for his mother uh, to kill her so that he doesn't ever answer the call and uh, follow that horrible fate. So he, he believes that if he can find her and kill her, that he will be back in control of, of his own destiny. Um, he was left on the door on his father's doorstep with a dagger um, that uh, 
has been with him his whole life, basically. So it is Jack's belief that if he can kill his mother with said dagger, everything will be fixed. That may or may not be true, but that's what Jack has convinced himself of over the years. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, and, and I guess to answer the current quest, he has found he has decided to use the call as a way to find her. Uh, and so he's he's gotten some help um, and is setting out on this mission to go sort of temporarily answer the call just long enough that he can track her down. Fantastic. And that is where you find yourself currently, is actually following the call. Now, you uh, have felt this tugging at your mind from time to time, but it's been soft enough to where you've been able to resist it or push it to the back of your mind. But this time you decided to just kind of surrender to it. Let it lead you where it's going to lead you. And it is an intoxicating feeling when you give into this. It's like an addiction that's been at the back of your mind and you finally have satiated it and you're on that high of finally giving in and it is leading you into some woods uh just out to the north of absalom uh pretty unspectacular woods they look like any other pair of woods that you would see they've just got trees and wildlife and they're pretty but nothing special so far but you're not wandering into these woods alone you, before you gave in to the call, uh, have had a contact that you've been working with to have a solution to being able to snap yourself out of the call, which is maybe a good friend, maybe a business partner, maybe you're not so sure, maybe there's some blurred lines, uh, but the person who gave you this is reliable, you know that much, and you've spent a pretty penny on the solution. And uh, that is a talisman that you're supposed to be able to wear around your neck, and once that talisman is destroyed, it should snap you temporarily out of the call. Temporarily for a good while, long enough to take control of what you need to do. Uh, what does that talisman look like? Um, it's pretty it's pretty simple. It's just a bit of glass um, uh, on a leather cord. And inside the glass is some uh, old preserved green moss. Excellent. As well as some other secret ingredients that were not shared with the likes of you, because business is business. Uh, so, you have this talisman around your neck, and you have instructed some company to join you into the woods, and this company is supposed to ensure that when you need to snap out of the call, that talisman needs to be broken. And that should give you your right mind again, should you lose control of yourself too much. Which is looking pretty likely, because the closer you get into these woods... You're not feeling like yourself. You're feeling lightheaded. You're kind of in and out of consciousness. You find yourself wandering very far in what only feels like a matter of seconds. And this company you're traveling with, uh, M, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about your character? My character's name is Krunk. And to describe him will be a bit of a feat. You see, Krunk is quite large. About seven feet in height, though, uh, his legs are rather short for someone of his stature. He's broad in chest, and uh, he's blue of skin. And on one side of his body, his arm just erupts like a monstrosity or like a mountain, almost. He's got humongous gray spikes coming out of his shoulder and running down his arm. His hand has almost what looks like a shield over it, and it looks almost like a claw more than a human hand. Um, half of his face is twisted a little in a permanent kind of uplift um, with big teeth, sharp fat, like sharp canines and one big horn that looks like it's been broken off. Um, he is what is known as a flesh warp. And some terrible accident or magical event has transformed his body to look as such. And uh, he wears full plate armor. So he basically appears as a tank, though he, uh, he keeps it very nice and clean and pristine give off the best impression that he can. 
His hair is pulled back into a high ponytail with some strands that hang down around his face along with a couple of braids. What a description. What a yeah. what a character. So this is the company that uh, you have chosen to uh, wander into these woods with, Jack. And why don't you guys tag team? Tell me a little bit about how you met and how you got put on this quest together. I'll let M start. Okay. It was initiated by Crunk. Jack was just going along his merry little way looking for people to hire. Once upon a time, Crunk was traveling to Absalom as he uh, laid out on his uh, rucksack to go to sleep. He had a dream that he believes was a prophecy from Desna herself, and he followed a purple butterfly that landed near a man that looked exactly like Jack, and he overheard someone speaking to him and saying the name Jack. So once upon reaching Absalom and recognizing his surroundings, he zeroed in and at, yep, there he was. Jack was standing there, probably leaning casually against a wall. And Crunk was kind of creepy about it. He, he, I don't know how to approach this guy. I don't want to creep him out. So he kind of hung back and watched until Jack walked down an alleyway with some unsavory, unsavory figures. Uh, yeah, Jack, uh, Jack runs in the underbelly of Absalom quite frequently and has made both friends and enemies, um, uh, from that crowd. So he, mm, some less than friendly people from that side of town found Jack and he, uh, they started to rough him up a little bit. Jack was looking for an escape, uh, and if you'll allow a little creative liberty, M, I think he he kind of duck weave dodged his way down back out of this alley and ran smack into the Crunk. blue wall that is Crunk. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, Crunk probably looked down at you and then at the people chasing uh, down the alleyway and uh, said. Jack, I've been looking for you everywhere. Who are your friends? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, guys, hey, the, I was just, this is the friend I was meeting. I was just, uh, I don't suppose you guys would like to introduce yourselves to my friend here. I say to the goons who, uh, probably looked at <laughs> Crunk's size and general build and decided to uh, continue this conversation with Jack on a different day. Yeah, we'll uh, catch up. And they scram. Uh, thanks for the save. Um, Crunk. Crunk. Right. Well, uh, see you around. Uh, well, if you have a moment, Jack. How do you know you didn't just overhear them? Uh, you... No, I heard a, a woman say your name earlier. Okay. Quite loudly. You following me or something? What do you no, want? Uh, <clears throat> of course not. I just, it see, I had noticed you earlier and then it seemed as if you could use some assistance now. If I'm bothering you, I can... I can leave immediately. Jack gives you an appraising look. There's a little As a bit matter of, like... of fact, I've, uh, I may have some time for you. I may Ugh. have a job for you, actually, if you're looking for work. Well, uh, Desna does say to aid travelers when they need assistance. Are you, uh, one of those religious types then? No, I don't. I don't worship uh, as a cleric might. I just have my own particular code. All right. Well, does your code have any problems with uh, slaughtering a coven of hags? <laughs> Did you know that uh, specifically night hags have been quite a problem for Desna? I have no issue. Up 
some strongly worded conversations with them. And he puts his hand on his sword hilt. All right. Well, in that case, we uh, may be in business. The job's pretty simple. That's not to say it's going to be easy. It's just going to be simple. I need you to follow me as we track down this coven of hags. And when the moment is right, you're going to rip a talisman off of my neck. Seems easy enough. No questions. Great. All right. I think we're going to get along really well. <laughs> I think uh, you'll find him a quick study. All right. Well, glad to make your acquaintance. We had out in a couple days. Uh, until then, I grab a drink or something. Ah, I would quite enjoy that. And he All seems right. genuinely, like, very happy to be invited out for a drink. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> They'll uh, pal around for a day or so as Jack finalizes his plans. And as soon as they have the talisman, they'll head out. Yeah, as fate had it, you guys got together, made a plan, got all the necessary equipment that you needed, got your amulet, and then... Uh, Headed out a couple days later, which is where you now find yourself following the call into these unremarkable woods with Krunk at your side. So, uh, Krunk, you've been following Jack for probably a good hour and a half, two hours into these woods. They go in pretty deep. In fact, it's getting to the point where it may feel like they're going on deeper than they should be from the glimpse you saw from a map or from an outside perspective. Like maybe you've gotten turned around or maybe you're just moving slower than you feel. Uh, but Jack was particularly quiet for about the last hour stretch. Uh, he just seems like he's in some sort of trance. He's not saying anything and just on a very set direction into the woods, walking at a steady and quite quick pace. And His directions uh, to you, Krunk, to, to, to kind of know when the time seems to be right. I think he would, he's taking his best guess. He doesn't actually really know, but um, he's basing this off of his childhood experience. And so he tells you if it looks like he is reaching for someone, that is when you need to snap him out of it. All right. So until until then, it, he he can kind of be in this half fugue state, <laughs> wandering through the woods. Fantastic. All right, and uh, yeah, you keep following him as as instructed. I imagine, Crunk. Absolutely. Excellent. Now you guys left early morning, uh, and you know you've only been traveling for about two, maybe three hours at this point at most. And as you wander deeper into the woods, you can see through the trees up above you, uh, the sun starts to go down. Which is not the right time for the sun to go down. But you can see it goes down quite quickly. Within the span of maybe five minutes, the sun is out of the sky. And you can see a crescent moon up above your head peeking through the trees with very bright, clear stars. Uh... What do you do when this happens, Krunk? Anything special? Or do you just keep on following Jack? Ugh, Krunk does not like this. Can I do like an arcana or some sort of knowledge on what, what's going on here? Yep, you sure can. Go ahead and uh, give me an uh, arcana. That'll work. Okay. First roll, 29. Woo -woo. 29. All right. 29, you are not sure what's causing this. Oh, also, everybody can go ahead and start this session with a hero point. So we'll give everybody one hmm. of those. Uh, for hero points for now, we're just going to use them for a reroll. Take the better result with a plus two. And, uh, or you can give it to an enemy to have them reroll at a minus two, take the worst result. That's how we'll use hero points for now. Um, yeah, so you're not sure what's causing it. Drunk doesn't like this. Uh, he's going to draw a deep breath, 
and murmur to uh, Lady Luck herself to guide his next steps. And he's going to draw just an ever so closer to Jack. Are you armed? Yeah, definitely. Like heavily? Like weapons drawn or are they Mm, back? No, I don't have my weapon drawn right now because I need to keep a hand free to break uh, the talisman. But he is wielding a big old shield on his arm. Fantastic. And he kind of always looks armed just for the sheer bulk of him. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and make me a perception, Crunk? Love to make a perception. Though I need to do it um, secret. Nope, you can do it publicly. A public rule. Right out in the open. Man, these are so extremely average rolls. 27. (laughs) A 27. All right, up ahead, you can see that there is a clearing in the woods. Uh, And you can't see exactly what's up ahead. You can see the reflection of the moon on maybe some sort of water up ahead. And you can see a few figures shadowed off in the distance, and you hear voices talking. You hear one sounds like they're shouting a little bit, but you're still far enough away that it's kind of hard to make out what they're saying. Oh, I don't like this. Um, I'm going to look over at Jack. Does he made any sort of change to his... Jack is just striding forward with a purpose. Ooh. Jack would have also shared with you, not really having any idea if this would actually work, but he will tell you that he has been jostled out of this state before without Mm -hmm. a magical talisman. So that if you, he discourages you from doing this frequently because he wants to focus, but he will tell you that that is like maybe something you could try. To try to do, I'm sorry, I I lost it for a second there. Say that again. Oh, just that he would he would say that like basically if there if you need to get his attention, you could try, and you don't want to break the amulet yet. You could try, just kind of like giving him a little nudge. <laughs> hey, <Okay. laughs> with one. He doesn't know if that'll work, but one big blunted finger with a kind of sharp fingernail. He's just gonna poke Jack right on the spine. Hey. Did you and uh, that? when so you give that like solid that. poke, jo- Jack seems like uh, he comes to for just a second, goes to almost look back at you to see what you need. Uh, but then you can see that the green eye glows a little bit and he just snaps attention back forward and just keeps striding towards that clearing. Exhaling and wondering what in the world his vision has brought him into. Krunk will reluctantly follow into this creepy, creepy, creepy situation that he doesn't want to be part of. Fantastic. <gasps> All right, this shifting maps here. Is this Chain Peku? It is Chain Peku. <laughs> Such lovely maps. Such All right, so. Else would make a map this beautiful. Mm-hmm. Jack's leading the way, striding forward. You enter into this clearing. As you push through the edge of the trees, you can clearly see there is a large pool of water in the middle of this clearing uh, with a stone pedestal of some sort on the other side of the water, raising up maybe about 10 feet. And the first thing that you notice pretty clearly is you see a uh, individual that is tied up to some sort of wooden cross Uh, up on the stone there, and uh, they are gagged. And why don't you tell us a little bit about this uh, person before you put that gag on there, Katie? Give us the description. Uh, Yes, this is, she's got some, like, studded leather, but it's very worn out. Um, Bright orange bits, but uh, a bandolier that looks like maybe there was a lot of stuff held in it, but that's kind of been torn apart. Uh, And she's got a little bronze necklace with uh, talismans hanging off that as well. Um, She looks pretty worse for the wear. Brown or black hair. uh, Looking around kind of wildly. She's trying to get out, but uh, yeah. That's that's what you see. Fantastic. So yeah, you see that individual tied up and gagged to some wooden looking cross 
uh, at the top of this 10 foot rock. So the, the rock is going down into the water. So the rock raises out of it away from you up a little bit, about 10 feet. And she is on a post right on the edge of the water. And she almost looks illuminated by the glow of the crescent moon reflecting off of the surface of the water. And then uh, across the way, you can see a few other individuals. And we can use your 27 perception here, Kronk. Uh, you can see uh, two women uh, with eyes that look like they're glowing like a bluish color as they reflect the moonlight. And from a distance, they look like twins. Like they look exactly like one another. Uh, Don't love they that. They look like that. And then uh, you can see that there is an old woman uh, between them that appears to be on her knees with her arms tied behind her back. And she looks like this. But she currently looks very panicked. Uh, Jack is beelining it towards them, and now as you're approaching, you can hear their conversation. You can hear that it's the old woman that's shouting. But please, you don't have to do this. You don't understand. I just came to join the coven. Why? Why would you turn on your own like this? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, and you can hear one of the women, uh, she talks very softly, though her voice seems to carry uh, across the water. It sounds like it's almost echoing as it's skipping a stone across the water before the sound reaches your ears. We're very sorry, sister, but the moon tells us that big things are happening. Fate is unraveling as we know it, and a grand sacrifice such as this is what is needed. You will be saving us all in a sense. Just let this happen. Please try to not take it personally. Of course I'm taking it personally. Untie me at once or I'll have both of your heads. And uh, Jack's just beelining it now like around the water heading towards these individuals. So what are you doing, Crunk? What a good question. Kronk is uh, chasing after Jack and just draws a deep breath and gosh, he really doesn't know if he should interrupt this. He's really only here to break the thing. And do they look like they're right about to do whatever they're about to do to this person if I don't intervene this very second? Or do I have some time before that happens? They look like they're fidgeting with some stuff in the grass. You can't quite see what they're doing from this distance. Uh, Ginny, you do see these two figures approaching the pool. Uh, what do you do? Uh, she's struggling, muffled, like... It sounds like swearing, trying to get out to, like, help, staring at one of them, staring at the other, back and forth, and, like, muttering at them. Excellent. Let's talk about, like, what, what were you last doing in Absalom? Because when you found yourself in this situation, uh, you don't really remember how you got here. You blacked out. I'm wondering out. how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was wondering how I got here. How did you yeah. know? Yeah, you blacked out, and uh, then you just woke up, tied to this post in front of the water, and you have been hearing these uh, women clearly talk about sacrificing you. Yeah, before that, in Absalom, I was looking for uh, materials and crafting things. I needed to restock all of my stuff, and Absalom's the place to go to get all of the stuff. So that's where I ended up was in Absalom doing this. And now I don't know why the hell I'm a sacrifice, but I don't love it. Fantastic. Yeah. The last shop you remember going to was some kind of a very exotic looking esoteric shop with all kinds of wild and fancy materials of exotic sorts. And uh, and yeah, you just uh, don't remember. Maybe something hits you in the back of the head. Maybe not. You just feel like you blinked and then you woke up here. And now here you are with two figures approaching. Uh, you gave that yeah. shop a one star review. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Crunk. So you can see somebody struggling and gagging across the uh, the water here. And Jack's just making his way across the pond. Uh, as you guys get about halfway across the pond, uh, the woman on her knees, uh, the old woman, looks towards both of you and looks towards Jack and gives... Kind of a devious smile. Oh, you're both in trouble now. 
I completed what I needed to. You say fate's unraveling, but I think mine's coming together. Uh, and they both just look at her kind of unconcerned. As you're getting closer, it looks like they are uh, they have sticks that they're drawing some sort of sigils into the ground with currently. Uh, just following behind Crunk. Yep, getting increasingly nervous. <gasps> okay. Jack. Jack. Excellent. Jack's just beelining it for this uh, old woman, it appears. And these two uh, kind of step up here and turn around and they look at Jack approaching. Um, Hello. A youngling, I see. Come to me, my boy. Come to me, my dear son. Mother's in trouble and I need you to save me. Just put a hand on my shoulder. And Jack's um, just beelining it. I'm going to grab Jack's shoulder at this point. And try okay. to hold him in place. Let him go! I need help! Can't you see that an old woman is in distress? And uh, at that point, uh, the two look at each other, the two twins kind of give each other just a very flat look, and then look back towards you, and it just looks like their skin explodes off of their body, and they transform into these horrid-looking creatures that look like this. Oh. Big, and we big are yikes. Going to roll initiative. You just yeah. hear from behind. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> You're like craning your neck to see oh, what's going on back there. <laughs> All right. I've added you guys to the initiative tracker. So you guys should just be able to roll from there. All right, Kronk, you have rolled incredibly average every time now, and it's time to fix that. Nope. Well, my first roll is... Oh, that wasn't my nat 20. That was Chase's nat 20. Chase's <laughs> nat 20. Yes, Ooh. I rolled so bad. I That means I can't even... Chase, before initiative starts, can I grab the talisman, or is it's too late? Uh, you can, yeah, you can grab it before it starts if you want. That's fine. Okay. As they're shifting, you can, mm -hmm. are you, are you going to crush it? Yeah. I'm looking at this. I'm seeing the shifting. The hag is calling the jack. There's somebody's life on the line. There's these crutchers turning. And this just seems like the appropriate time to snap Jack out of it before I have to fight Jack. So I'm just okay. going to like hook one claw around it and just break it. All right. Uh, so yeah, that talisman shatters. The, gra the glass crumbles. There's some sort of liquid inside that spills over your hand. It's got kind of a nice floral aromatic smell that fills the air as it shatters apart. And Jack, uh, your eye stops glowing and you snap to attention. Uh, you remember the whole path here. You remember traveling. You didn't quite feel like yourself, and it felt like it all happened very fast, but you remember it. You remember everything that's happened up until now. But now you have kind of a full grasp over your mind. And uh, you see this old woman, and you see these two very large creatures that just shifted in front of you. Jack, my boy, please save me. I know we didn't get off on the right foot, but I am your mother, and I love you. Apologies for the rude awakening, Jack. But your assistance is necessary. It looks All like right. you picked the right time. And uh, we're going to jump into initiative here. So uh, this hag is up first. And uh, she is going to just very slowly point a finger towards Jack. We recommend that you turn around. You're going to suffer a terrible, terrible fate. Everything is coming to an end, and yours is a grisly one. And uh, I need you to make me a will save, Jack. Hey. Uh, is this a mental effect? This is a mental effect. Hey. I get a plus one, because I'm used nice. to resisting the call. A 38. Ooh, ooh a 38. All right, let's see here. That is a success. Uh, you do feel like a, a brief sense of dread as you look into that terrible red eye that seems to focus on you. And like, you feel like she might be telling the truth, but you're able to shrug it off and take no ill effect from it. 
And uh, as she sees that you don't really seem to suffer from it, she's going to get frustrated and with a shout. She's going to raise her other hand and swing it towards you in a throwing motion. And a blast of energy is going to uh, attack you here. Uh, let's see here. So you need to make me a fortitude save on this one. Okay. Nothing special for me here. <gasps> but I'm rolling oh, so high. Wow. Another 38. All right. So this is like a, this is a blue, white colored bright beam that flies at you. It looks very much similar to the very clear moon up in the sky in beam form. It just flies right. You're able to dodge out of the way just in time. And, uh, this one is going to let out a shriek in frustration, and she is going to throw a beam at you as well. So why don't you go ahead and make me another fortitude save? Okay, let's see if my luck... Let's see if Desna is smiling upon us, Crunk. We'll find out. <laughs> 34? All right, 34 is going to take half damage from okay. this. Oh my gosh, so many dice. The, Can we get the, a noise for 69? <laughs> noise. Noise. What a big first damage roll here. All right, so you're going to take half of that. Wow. Okay, is... we are at level 11. I'm I'm getting acclimated. These 34? numbers are so scary to me. <laughs> yeah, so 34 damage. Okay. And then this one's going to gesture towards you, Crunk. You will also suffer an ill fate, an even grislier end. You do not need to support him. Turn around now before it's too late. And uh, you can go ahead and make a will save as well, Crunk. Uh-oh, uh-oh, SpaghettiO. Let's go. Hold it together, Crunk. I don't think I have anything to boost my save. We're just at a flat 20. Well, we rolled a 16, 36. Wow, 36 is going to succeed. So you guys are and both immune to this And if I succeed, I critically succeed. Excellent, there you go. Yeah, you're immune to this for 24 hours. Oof. All right, that is their turn. Jack, you're up. Uh, okay. Kind of looks at both of these night hags. Uh, Jack, my boy, that one's on your side. She's gonna point up to the uh, tied up person. Hmm. Hmm. There's like Jack frantic. Jack, I don't mean. Jack, I don't mean to tell you your business, but. I don't know if we should trust the, just the word of this person. <laughs> Jack looks at you with just like the most deadpan eyes. Yeah, I think I gathered that. Oh. <clears throat> You'll need the help. He uh, he looks at these night hags and he kind of, he'll, he'll I guess, one action, he'll draw his weapons. Uh, that now appear in his hands, uh, his rapier and his dagger. Listen, I'm just here for that one. All right, I don't really care what's going on here, so we don't have a problem. You're saying that to the two large creatures? Yeah. <laughs> All right, would you like to spend an action to diplomatize? Uh, sure. Um... All right. Actually, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll try it. I'll try it. Whoa! I've rolled so high. What? What is going on? A 38. Uh, they both look at each other and then they look back to you and they both speak in sync this time. This one's demise is guaranteed. You can turn away and there needs to be no violence. Um, yeah, it's guaranteed because I'm here and I've got this, so glad to see we're on the same page here. And, uh, Jack, uh, will throw his dagger at Jack. his mom. Jack, that, okay. was that was pretty cool. That was... <laughs> do, you, do you always have those just, like, loaded in the chamber? Jack's not listening to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead and uh, make an attack. All right. Does she count? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. A critical failure. No. 
I need a hero. Po I'm gonna spend my hero point early. <laughs> I'm Get not gonna add my first, my first strike at my mother. <laughs> be a critical failure. That's fair. Okay, one more time. One more time. Okay, that's a 39 with the hero point plus two. All right, 39 is going to crit. Yay. Ooh. I don't know if she counts as flat-footed being tied up. I don't know. I guess I don't know if she's actually tied up or if it's just a ruse. Please, I don't know if I'm doing sneak attack damage or not. Uh, yes, you are. She is currently flat-footed. Okay. <clears throat> I still didn't figure out how to do the sneak attack damage, so... Yeah, I'm go ahead. You can just... roll separately. Oh, I forgot to roll the crit. Hang on. Ignore that roll. I'm going to roll critical damage. Uh, and then... I also have... Oh, no, that one's not grievous and special. Okay, so 16 and then my... 6 d6, right? Because I crit and double? Yep. Okay. Wow, look at that. 36 damage total. 36 damage. Which I think right. is, is almost exactly the damage that you took. Almost. I think you took 34, yeah. That is interesting. Very appropriate. So you, th you threw in a dagger, right? Yeah. Yeah, that dagger spins. It goes right between these two, who very angrily turn their heads as the dagger whizzes between them. And it goes right into your mother's throat. And uh, she starts letting out a horrible gurgle as green blood starts dripping to her neck. And then she just looks up at you angrily. Her eyes start to flash green. Her voice gets deep and unnatural. Violent, violent boy! And uh, she transforms into this horrid-looking creature. Not quite like the other two, but also not very uh, comforting. Oh, sorry, Mom. Was this not the uh, tearful reunion you were hoping for? The uh, other two uh, hold up hands to you, panicked. No, she must die in ritual. And uh, then as a reaction, your mom is going to uh, gesture uh, a nod. She's still got her hands tied behind her back. The rope seems to have splayed and broken apart, but now there's like a glowing moonlight looking binding keeping her hands behind her back. Uh, but yeah, she's going to nod towards this person on the rock and uh, that uh, wooden cross is going to shatter to pieces. So Ginny, your feet touch the ground. Your hands are still bound and your mouth is still gagged, but you are able to move. And uh, what else you got, Jack? I think that was three. I drew my weapons, I diplomatized, and I threw my dagger. All right. So that's it for me. Excellent. Ginny, you're up. Also, you see a little satchel with your things at your feet. Wonderful. Uh, since she's now standing, she's going to, like, brush the gag away and, like, look over. Are you too crazy? Uh, and she's going to go digging for an implement and turn around. Which one did you want to kill most? The green one, but I have to do it with that dagger. With that or particular dagger? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. And I have a question really quick, Chase, actually. Uh -huh. If it's returning, does it come back the next yeah, turn you, or does it... No, you just gesture back? it back. Okay, yeah. Back, yeah. So as soon as he says... That dagger, it comes zooming back and flicks into his hand. Trail of green blood as it comes back to your hand. Right. Uh, that one? That, she's a scary one. Uh, but Ginny will stare at the mother and exploit uh, a vulnerability. All right, fantastic. And that is an esoteric lore check, correct? Sure is. Let's let's roll it. That's it's gonna be a nat one. Cool. <laughs> you are still a little China. bit disoriented here. Uh, you know, looks like some kind of ogre to you. You want to kill an ogre with a dagger? What? <laughs> Jack turns to Crunk. Yeah, you were right. She's useless. That's rude. <laughs> uh, can I do that again? Uh, let's can... see. Esoteric lore. Let's take a look. 
Exploit vulnerability. Are you trying to exploit vulnerability? Yeah. Let's see. Frequency once per round. Yep. Nope. So I sure can't do that again. Okay. Well, I'm gonna move. All right. Over here. Doing a little hoppy on this uh, rock yeah. and water across. I'm grabbing, so I'm grabbing my bag with my tied hands. I'm gonna hop. I am hitting a wall. This is fine. Please move me behind the big guy. Oh yeah. There you go. Uh okay, two and then I'm gonna recall knowledge on this one, simply because I can. Yeah, I like it. Go ahead and roll me either a religion society or hag lore here we go with religion there we go where was that roll 35 all right excellent so uh the way that i do recall knowledge checks is that whenever you succeed i give you the lore about the creature tell you what it is and then i let you pick one category offense defense or special ability and i give you some information based on that category so, uh, yeah, with a success, this is a moon hag. Moon hags are powerful soothsayers who dwell in places where souls receive their final judgment. These vile creatures possess knowledge of and perhaps some power over the portals between the lands of the living and the dead, and innocent mortals sometimes seek them out for this reason. Moon hags use their knowledge to sow discord and place seeds of doubt in those who unwittingly seek their aid. Beings of great power can intimidate them into sharing the truth of what they know, but the cunning hags always try to hide some important pieces of information or word things in such a way that anyone acting on their divinations still finds their plans failing in the ruin. Uh, offense, defense, or special abilities. Mm, let's do defense. All right, so defense is going to tell you their best save and their worst save. Worst save is fortitude. Best save is will. And then uh, they are immune to confused, and they are weak to cold iron by 10. Hmm. Janine's going to peek her head out from around. Uh, you know, that ogre there, I don't know about that one, but these two. Uh, if you've got cold iron on your blade, cut right through them. And if you scare them, they'll give you more information. Yeah, she's going to hide. This is the first time I've ever encountered a hag. I don't know. I'm just trying to help you. Was your dagger cold iron? No, but my rapier okay. is. Okay, excellent. Oh, snap. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else for you? I think that's three actions. That's right? it. Yep. All right. Uh, unknown adventurer for some reason is it has you in the initiative. I promised Krunk. my character sheet says Crunk. I, I know, know who that it. is. It's Crunk. It's <laughs> not unknown to me. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. In our okay. hearts. <laughs> Kronk is going to draw his weapon, Chase. Uh-huh. Um, oh, man. Maybe I'm not going to draw my weapon. I've never played a Magus before, but I feel oh. like I should... One action. Cast shield. Second action, enter Arcane's uh, Cascade. And then third action. What's happening? Don't worry what? about it. I was just getting you back in initiative as Crunk. What? Okay. I don't like the nat one that you rolled on me. Don't worry about it. It's not a big Okay. Deal. And then um, last action, I will move up. I don't have my weapon drawn, but I want to get in front of Jack to keep these things from getting on him. Alright, excellent. What does your arcane cascade look like? So, he casts the shield, right? And it's just like this shimmering orb that kind of like hovers like around him. And then uh, as he enters arcane cascade, it almost looks like he falls into a stance that, uh, sets him a little bit more balanced right one foot slightly behind the other his shoulders up his eyes are grow more focused as uh, magic kind of like lifts up off of his skin like sparking between his spikes 
as he gets ready to rumble. Love it. All right. So that's what useful looks like. Jack points to Crunk as he shouts back at the Ginny. <laughs> oh, there's no need to be rude. All right. This hag is back up. And uh, they um, are. Chase, really oh. quick. Sorry. Because I crit with my dagger, I forgot. Um, I have the crit specialization thing. Ooh, okay. Jig, so and what is that so for you? 1d6 of persistent bleed damage. You got it. Let's see here. Persistent. She's damage. not in the initiative tracker, so I just wanted to let you know. Oh, thank you. Let's uh, add her to the initiative tracker. I appreciate that. All right, there we go. She is there. And uh, her turn was setting Ginny free, so we're back up to the top, to the moon hags. Foolish flesh warps. We warned you of your demise. And uh, this one's going to step up and ready in action. And then this one is going to go step up and flank you, uh, giving you the flat-footed condition. This one's going to take their ready to action to swing at you with one of their big, nasty claws. They okay. looked kind of like at first glance, just like long fingernails. But as they swing at you, you can see they glint in the moonlight and they seem very sharp. Don't like that. Right. Oh! How about a 43 versus your armor class? Um, so what a good question. That is a crit. Okay, and that's considering your shield bonus, correct? For casting shield? Yeah, it looks like yeah. it's still like exactly a crit. Uh-huh. All right, uh, would you like to shield block this or no? Yeah, let's shield block the crit. Would you like to shield block with your shield that you have in hand or your shield spell? Hmm. I would like to block with the shield I have in my hand, because I think that's going to block more than my spell will. Excellent. All right. Here is the critical damage. 60. Right. 60 okay. negated by your shield's hardness. So do I hit the block button and will it do that? It should. Yep. Should apply Hang on. Let me make sure that this is toggled correctly. Mm -hmm. let's see yep you've got your 80 shield hp so for those who are watching i house rule the sturdy shields to be a rune instead so crunk currently has a uh, spine shield with the stir with the lesser sturdy rune on it so woof so my so my shield is only at a uh, 36 hp now yep so it is now broken woof yep yep is it broken it's past its broken threshold of 40, so yep. Okay. So uh, you can still raise it and block with it, but it won't give you your AC bonus now that it's broken. Okay, good and to then know. And if it goes to zero hit points, it's uh, destroyed. Woof, okay. All right, uh, that was the one with the readied action. This other one is going to attack you as well. That's going to be a 37. That's a hit, not a crit. Here is the damage. 18 damage on that one. Um, I'll take it. And then it's going to swing at you again. 34. That's a miss. Oh, no, that's a hit. Okay. My AC is actually not showing correctly because I was at 33 before. Now it's showing me at 31 and I'm not sure why. Oh, because I'm I'm flanked. Okay, yep. that's why. Okay, 30, 30 damage on that one. Okay. Can I? I'm gonna use my second reaction that I have. You do no, not. No, I can't yet. I can't yet. Okay. Yep. All right, I'll just take it. Okay. All right, that's it for the hags. Jack, you're up. Hey, okay. rude boy. Let me try one more time. On your ogre lady. That you're asking right. to hold. Yes. I will hold. All right, rude boy. Let me just try. It. This is your mother. This is. It's weird. If you release me, unlike my insubordinate son, I can heal your friend. Don't listen to her. She, every word she speaks is a lie. I wouldn't exactly call us friends yet, but. Uh... 
That was a 32 hit, Chase. For, uh, a 32. This is esoteric lore, right? Yep, it sure is. Let's see here. 32 succeeds. Awesome. All right. I can recall its highest weakness. Okay. So you know it has got cold iron as its highest weakness. And then uh, exploit weakness lets you consider your attacks as its highest weakness. Is that mm -hmm. right? It, uh, yep. Because you're doing exploit vulnerability, right? Right. Yep. Okay. And you're holding your implement. I have never seen a Thaumaturge in action, so this is cool. So select a selector creature you can see, attempt an esoteric lore check against standard DC for its level. You got it. If you retrieve the right object from your esoteric implement to empower it, you get the following effects. On a success, you recall an important fact about the creature learning its highest weakness. Uh, you can exploit either the creature's mortal weakness or personal antithesis. Mm -hmm. So... Which one are you choosing? Here? I am going to choose its mortal weakness because then I'm going to point at Grumpy Rude Boy over here, and there'll just be this thin beam of like orange energy that goes toward Jack um, because I'm going to use an action to share the weakness um, with bound hands, of course. All right, cold iron on your mother. Uh, she's especially weak to it. Do with that what you will. Um, and then what am I gonna do now? I'm. That was one to exploit vulnerability, one to share weakness. Yep, and. Uh... Shield. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to aid. So I'll step up. No, no, no. I can't do that. I'm gonna try to aid from here. Okay. Got it. And by house rule, you can aid defense from back there, but not attacks. It's fine. All right. Uh, okay, that's Ginny's turn. So let's go to Jack. Uh, all right. Jack looks mad that these night hags are getting in the way. Um, but Krunk has been a good new mm, nearly friend. We're nearly there, I think. Uh, over the past few days and did do his job. He doesn't really want to see Krunk die uh, while he's trying to accomplish his mission. So he points his rapier at his mother and he says I haven't forgotten about you I just have to take care of something first oh my dear boy don't like that he rolls his eyes and then he's going to step and then skirmish strike here cool excellent what does skirmish strike do skirmish strike means I can step then strike as one action nice um, and I believe that makes her flat-footed. It okay. sure does. All right. I still haven't figured out how to toggle on my <laughs> sneak attack damage, but we'll just... Roll yeah, I don't see the now. button I normally see, so we'll figure that out later. <laughs> but here's the roll. Oh, you're rolling you're roll so hot tonight. A 40. That's a crit. Rolls are Love on it. fire. Love it. All right. Um, this is cold iron? This is cold iron. All right, increase the damage by 20. <gasps> okay. And what's, what's your crit specialization here? Um, My crit specialization, what a good question. It is, um, okay, it is deadly. And then the specialization effect, it's made off balance, becoming flat footed until the start of my next turn. Doesn't really nice. matter here too much, but um, also uh, I have debilitating strike. Um, Ooh, which one which are you gonna choose? I'm going to. Um, I can make her enfeebled one, or I can make her slower. I think 
I'm going to make her enfeebled one. You got it. Is that double on a crit? I don't bel- I don't think so. Cool. Not that it says here, anyway. All right. <laughs> okay, here's the damage. That is uh, 19 plus two, uh, two D6 persistent bleed damage. Okay. And then plus the 20 from Cold Iron. So that'd be 39 total. Okay. And plus then I have attack. to do my sneak attack. Another 17 on top of that. Bang. Right. So we've got. 17 minus 19 minus 20. All right. Uh, that's a searing blow here as you stab into her. It seems to sizzle with the cold iron. She lets out a yeah. shriek, turns away from Crunk, looks angrily at you. Listen, I said we didn't need to have a problem, but you made one. Uh, and you I made the problem. Shrike again. That, that is only a 20. <laughs> I had to miss eventually. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's everything. Yep, that's everything. All right, excellent. That is your turn. Crunk, you're up. Okay. Um, Can you remind me how much battle medicine heals at the higher tiers? So it depends on which one you go for. If you're expert and you go for a 20... It will be uh, 2d8 plus 10. And then if you go for master at a DC 30, it's 2d8 plus 30. I'm going to try and do one battle medicine on myself. Okay. Okay. And you're going for which one? How much do you have to roll for the master? 30. I have a 19. I just need an 11. Let's go for it. Sweet. Got it. Nice. That is going to succeed. So 2d8 plus 30 healing on yourself. All right. 41 healing. Pretty solid. Let's see. Do, do, do. Plus. I said 41. 41? Yep. Bam. Okay. That was one action to do that. And then my next two actions, Chase, I am going to spell... No, I didn't draw my weapon. Oh, you can assume you have your weapon drawn. Okay, I'm going to spell strike this fish. Okay. I like it. What what are you spell striking? That's such a good question. So I don't know what they're weak to. Um, You do know they're weak to cold iron. Okay. And there's no resistances except for confusion. Confusion. Confusion? Confusion. Let's call it confuse now. Confuse. (laughs) All right. I will do a reduce flame. Nope. A ray of frost. Okay. Okay. Going with the cantrip. Yep. Going with the cant. Well, that's a good point. This is the first session. Maybe I should go big. Let's go with a shocking grasp, Chase. I like it. Okay. Uh, so I roll my attack first, right? Yep. Okay. We got... Oh, that's not it. This is it right here. <gasps> Rolling plus 21. What Ooh, about a 37? Nice. 37 and... with the flat footed is exactly a crit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice. So now what do I have to do for the, for the, for the... For the cantrip chase, do I have to roll an attack for that well, too? Well, you didn't do a cantrip. You said you did a shocking grasp. Oh, right, grasp, a shocking grasp. Which is better. <laughs> so do- you're going to roll the crit for your weapon, and then you're going to roll the crit for the shocking grasp. Okay, critical weapon. I rolled so low. And then I just straight up roll the crit for the shocking grasp. I don't even have to do the... Yep. Uh, I don't know if this is, is in, if this is automatically heightening the spell, Chase. Uh, Let's find out. Yeah, oh, it definitely did. is. Okay, so double that. Okay, so That's you... eighty-eight spell damage, Chase, plus uh-huh. eighteen physical damage. Um, is the eighteen already doubled. Yes. Okay. Yes. 
because I rolled a two and a one, I think, on my damage dice. Excellent. That's so much damage. Now, yeah. they are not wearing any metal, so they don't take the persistent. But, uh, I mean, you see Hag's skeleton when you connect to that blow. Oh, and, man. Uh, She's looking kind of back and forth, not knowing who to uh, take it out on now. Oh, did you add your arcane confluence or arc? Yeah, your arcane no, cascade. No, my cascade. Well? I didn't add my cascade damage. Excellent. Uh, so let me let me say this. This is gonna be, uh, I deal extra damage. Was that calculated in? Uh, I don't think it was. Okay, so that's. Three, that's two. That's two, so that's going to be four more damage, Chase. Okay. And then if the spell dealt damage, the bonus damage is with that evocation is force. Okay. A little extra force damage. Okay. Okay, so battle medicine spell strike. That's your turn. She's looking real bad. She's sizzling from the electricity. She's looking a little shaky. Uh, Mama's going to go. Jack! Release me, I can help. You need the help. Just let me save my boy. And uh, that's her turn. I don't like her. Yeah, All imagine right. how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> All of us. Uh, that's Jack's problem. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mom's persistent bleed falls off and she takes one damage. I actually took four damage. I'm going to heal her for a little bit. All right, and that's her turn. Uh, all right, it is this hag's turn, and uh, after Big Crunk, she's going to turn her attention back to him, and she is going to strike him. All right, how is a 29 versus your flat-footed Crunk? A 29 is a miss. Okay, here is the second attack. Get off of me! That's a hit. Okay, here's the damage. 22 damage. Okay. And as she's clawing at you wildly, she's saying, I told you, grisly fate. It wasn't supposed to be for me, but it will now. (laughs) And then she's going to swing at you again. You'll need to do more than a tickle. And that one will miss. Just the middle one, not a tickle. All right. She is taking six bleed damage and it falls off. Whew. All right, okay. this other hag is going to go and this one is going to full round your crunk. That's a hit. Okay, 37 hits. Here's the damage. 24. Um, okay. And then another one. That's a hit. It's gonna hit. You have to do all of them, Chase. Man, 37, 36. <laughs> 29 more damage. Hang on, and... Chase. Hang on one second. I might need to do something here. Okay. Nope, I missed the trigger. This is one targeted with a strike, not one damaged. What were you going to do? If you're going to do it, it's I was fine. Gonna it's do, session. I was going to do unexpected transposition. Mm-hmm. It says when you're attacked, you attempt to quickly swap your own positions with that of another creature. Oh that God. A creature that is unwilling to swap places must attempt to will save. So I was going to swap uh, places with this one to see if it could kill its own thing. Oh, oh yeah. Let's go for it. Okay. All right. So tell me how this works. Okay. So you need to make me a will save, which is apparently with, only with a this one. Yeah. I think guess it's only a DC 26. That's so low. This should be with charisma, though. I think that should be higher. Is it your class yeah. DC? Maybe. Maybe it is 26. Maybe I'm just used to higher level characters. Does 26 sound correct to you? Uh, let's take a look here. Yeah. Okay. 26 it is. It's a little bit on the low end, but yeah. Okay. Is this supposed to be with charisma? Or is it supposed to be with... So our, it should be with my int, right? Uh, da, da, yeah, it should be. I don't know why it's no, showing that. No, it should be with your strength for a Magus. Oh. What? Strength You're... is their uh, key ability score. A 39? 
lion chase. Yikes. Yeah. That's I'm using my freaking hero point. Reroll that. Okay. Here we go. I, I'm not taking no critical success. I've got a 29 instead. Okay. 29 instead. Here we go. All right. That's oh. going to be What is wrong with you? It's going to be a 37 for the worst one there. All right. Oh. Sounds good. Um, All right. A 37 is a fail, but not a critical fail. Is there any half effects? Nope. Okay, okay, I'll take the 29 damage then. All right, excellent. And then uh, for her last action, she's going to do a rend since she hits you with both attacks and she's just going to deal another strike damage for free. Wow, Chase. That's very rude. It's extremely rude, actually. Okay, I'm down. Uh, <laughs> you are not down. Green Hag is going to do a reaction here and uh, this is going to keep you at one hit point as uh, she screams, No, you're my only hope. My insubordinate son's not helping me. You will. And uh, she uh, just kind of face plants onto the ground and like shoves her shoulder into the earth and some roots wrap up around you and keep you standing upright. Wow. Okay. Thanks, Mom. All right, Ginny, you're up. I hate this quite a lot. Uh, I'm going to run up here. Okay. Don't mind me running up and pulling. Oh, none of my stuff is here. Yeah, I gotta pull a potion and then I would like to use said potion. Okay. On Crunk. I'll. You got it. What kind of potion are you using? It is a lesser healing potion. So it's 2d8 plus 5. You want to roll it and then I'll... 2d8 plus 5. Take an average amount of healing. <laughs> okay. 13. Better than, Better than one. It's true. I think that's all my actions. Run up. Pull out feed. Yeah. That's not right, Chase? Yep. Yep. Okay. Correct, correct. Oh shit, don't die. <laughs> Alright. Jack, you're up. Okay. Well, the best way to help Crunk is to get rid of these night hags. So it's just gonna stab again. And he looks over at his mom and he says, Don't think this changes anything. I'm Point. saving your bodyguard, you ungrateful boy. Only drama. It is a lot of drama. It is a lot of drama. <laughs> oh. No! Johnny that's seven. exactly a hit with the flat Oh, footing. that's good. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that's just the, the seven plus a d6 of persistent bleed damage. Okay. And then 3d6 for sneak attack. So another 10 and it's cold iron. Okay. How do you do it? Oh, I love it. Um, yeah. So he's like arguing with his mom. He says, don't think this changes anything. And he stabs the hag through and, and as he pulls his blade out, like lifts it up. So he just slashes her kind of up through the jaw. Um, and then I would like to use a reaction, uh, of your next. Ooh, okay. When I reduce an enemy to zero hit points, which I have just done, I can menacing menacingly remind another foe that you're coming after them next. So I look, uh, at the, wait, she's dead, right? The, yeah. She just transformed. Okay. I saw this beautiful woman in front of me and I was like, oh, no, 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 none of that, <laughs> none of that trickery. Um, all right. I look at the other night hag and uh, I say, you had a chance to get out of the way, but you didn't take it. And now you're paying the price. 
Uh, She's uh, wailing this lamenting wail. No! And then I'm going to try to intimidate, well, demoralize her. Um, okay, intimidation versus her will, DC. Now, as her sister dies and as you're taunting her, uh, you can see some of the shimmer in her eyes and this starts to fade away. And it looks like her body deteriorates a little bit. It looks like she got weaker. All right. I like that. Ooh. 37. 37 versus the will DC. It's going to succeed, so she will be frightened one. Awesome. <clears throat> okay. That was a strike. Strike and, and a reaction. Oh, yeah. My reaction. I still have two actions. Awesome. Okay. I will. Oh, what a good boy, Jack. Get the other one now. I'm trying to decide how to move because I might provoke an opportunity attack. Um, you know what? It's fine. I'll just skirt around and try to get behind her. I can't move there because there's a wall, but I want to try and get back there to There you go. Okay. Okay. No op attack? She is. Okay. No op attack. Lovely. All right. One more attack then. Oh, that that flirted with the 19. Oh, that, it is it only really 26. Did. That hits now. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Coven, her coven <laughs> bonus is gone, so that's going to hit. Oh, also, she's frightened. Yeah. So, oh, so that's much. True. So many debuffs. Okay. All right. Then there's 8 plus 1d6 persistent bleed damage, and my sneak attack is 16, and it's cold iron. 34! 34 damage. Okay. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with that turn. <laughs> That's a pretty great <laughs> turn. All right, Crunk, you're beat up and it's your turn. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um... Kronk is going to one action heal himself with a focus point. He's going to do a lay on hands. I don't know why this says I don't have enough focus points to do this. There we go. Lay on hands healing. So, oh, right. Uh, you took that archetype. I did. So Kronk lifts the hand that's wielding his shield and presses it to his chest. And there is a like a golden swirl that goes around his arm, and riding on that swirl are uh, four purple butterflies, and then it just whoosh, goes straight into healing. Mm. Well, I think this is it's a automatically splat. full full uh, full heals. You don't have to roll mm -hmm. for it when you heal yourself. And that is what, six times whatever level that I can I cast? Six? 30 health? I think it's 36. 36. I think it's 36. Yeah. It didn't tell me when I hit the healing button, but I'm pretty sure it's 36. Boom! I'm pretty sure. Quick heal for himself, and then uh, his shield is busted, so he's going to free action drop his shield, his second action is to two-hand his bastard sword, and he's going to come up and then down on this hag. That's between right. them. I like it. Okay. Let's see it. I'm going to do two-hand. Strike. Big money. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ooh, oh, that's a crit. That's a crit. Okay. This isn't going to be <laughs> as big as the last boy, but here it is. 44, 44 is damage. solid damage. Okay. Carves into her. She's way thicker skinned than she looks. Mm -hmm. You can hear bone crunch and some purple, silvery blood drip down her back, but she's still kicking. All right, that's it for Krunk, yeah? Krunk is going to try and say a cool line like Jack. What, what is that's it? okay, What's Chase. What's the cool line? Yeah, uh, it's a free yeah. action. So he's, he's going to say, taste this! <laughs> and that's going to be as good as he can do. Very cool. I love yeah. it. Yeah. He's super suave. Uh, All right. Good one, Crunk. We'll keep working on that. 
He loves that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little a little beam of light comes down on him. There's <laughs> just an eyebrow raised Back. from the sideline. My boy, can I aid you? Can we fight together as mother and son? Shut up. Just say yes, it will help. I can't listen to you anymore. Just say yes, Jack. Say yes. No. Say yes! Leave me alone! Okay, that's her turn. It is the Moon Hag's turn. And uh, getting burned by the cold iron and seeing that you're the one that killed her sister, she's going to claw at you now, Jack. That and... seems logical. All right, Dude, how is a 26? He's too quick for that. And then uh, remember, nimble dodge, if you have it, is a reaction before I roll. So I'll start trying to I give pause. I use my if you reaction. Right. Okay. But thank you for. Here's the uh, second one. She's just flailing angrily. Jack's She's gonna laughing keep at her. How's the 32 land? <laughs> okay. She finally connects. <laughs> laughed a little too soon. <laughs> yeah, he laughed. Chase, <laughs> can I suggest something uh, mechanically? Uh huh. That Krog's sword was actually stuck deep in her shoulder and so they were kind of like wrestling with each other while he's trying to free his weapon and it was like he pulled his back as she went forward and it just that's why she got him <laughs> yeah. really hit Jack. <laughs> yeah i like it all right only 13 damage though okay and then uh that is her turn frightened falls off at the end of it and she is going to take three bleed damage and it will not fall off. And that is her turn. Ginny, you're up. Mm, all right, so I see rude boys got the implements, but maybe maybe you could use a little more help with their weaknesses. So... You... I don't know if that succeeds enough, though. It does not... Five. You got your hero point. Probably wrapping mm -hmm. up the session soon. Sure. Let's let's re-roll. I want to give Krunk a, a chance to use a weakness. Reroll to plus two will succeed because you're only two off. Sick. Okay. So uh, she's now your exploit weakness target. So I'm gonna just grab rip something. It's so blind off of my uh, hip, and she's just gonna like grab Krunk's wrist. And wrap something around the sword. Tr trust me, this will help. Uh, now, when you hit her, it'll hurt more. And I'm gonna share, or uh, yeah, share weakness. Nice. And... So exploit vulnerability, share weakness. Yeah, uh -huh. one action. And then I will uh, aid for my final. All right, excellent. That's it for Ginny. Jack, you're up. Okay. Rinse and repeat. I'll strike with my rapier again. Any reaction for you, Ginny? Uh, yeah. No. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. That's gonna hit anyways. Around. Okay. I hit for six damage. Um, and sneak attack is gonna do 17 damage. And then the cold iron. Okay. That's burning through. She's looking pretty bad. She's breathing heavily, looking back between the two of you. Still looking not a little bit dead, panicked. huh? Still not dead. Oh my gosh, I have not been using my debilitating strike every time. It's oh, yeah, which one did you want to debilitate now? Uh, I'll just make her enfeebled. Okay. Enfeebled um, one. And I will, I will swing again. And Jack's full of the debuffs. Jack is full of the debuffs. Oh, it toyed 25. with that 20. 25 is going to miss. Dang it. All right. Um, I think I I think there's not really anything else. Oh. Yeah, I'll just swing one more time. Might as well. 24 is also going to miss. That it is. She's All getting right. a little ready for it. She catches the rapier in the claws. And uh, that's Jack's turn. Crunk, you're up. Krunk is going to cast Cascade Countermeasure. It adjusts his arcane cascade to give him resistance to spells, but more importantly, it recharges his spell strike. 
and so he's gonna go for one more spell strike on this. This time we're gonna use a cantrip. Uh, we'll do Ray of Frost. We're gonna okay. aid. And okay, I roll use... your aid. I totally aid. Nice. A That's plus a plus one. one. Mm -hmm. Okay, here comes my strike. I'm going to add my my shinny bonus. <laughs> and here we go. What about a 37, Chase? 37's what a, 37 a crit. 37 looks like. <gasps> and it acts like cold iron now. Yay! Add 20 Welcome damage to, to whatever you roll. All right, all right, all right. Here comes the critical of the weapon. Wow, Ooh. max damage. Max damage. Hang on, here, comes, here comes this. Um, This did not double for the crit. So 36 so, so 36 good. for that. Right. Aaron is going damage. to take a minus 10 per foot speed penalty. Don't forget that I also get the double for my arcane cascade. So I get a plus four damage. So and, 100. And then my 20 for the cold iron. 120 she's damage. A full speed penalty. Because I don't know if she's walking away from this one. <laughs> How do you do it? <laughs> Okay, so uh, I just hear this little voice coming from the, the the left of me, and Kronk jumps a little, which is kind of hilarious looking considering his short legs. His sword comes up behind his head, and he swings it down with a shout as Frost covers his blade, delves deep in her body, and then explodes outwards with icicles. Fantastic. And, and, as just... she... and as she shatters apart, we're going to exit initiative. Oh, you did it. Oh, that uh, seems like I made a good investment. Jack oh. hold, like holds out his hand. Uh, like bones? Uh, yeah, sure. Yes. It, um... For the very first time since becoming a flesh warp. Kronk gives somebody knuckles. I love it. And he's just like, he blushes. It's kind of weird. Um, why don't you gents untie me, maybe? It's just a little weird with the hands. Uh, yeah. Like. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, I, I got it. Uh, Jack will grab your hands a little roughly and just slice through the ropes with his <laughs> dagger. Good enough. And as soon as you turn around from the cutting Ginny's bonds, you can see that your mother has shapeshifted back into the elderly form, and her hands are now in front of her, unbound. Oh, my good boy. Thank you so much for coming to save me. I knew that this day would come. You would listen to it. You hear it, don't you? I'm stuck in a wall, Chase. <laughs> ah, yes. I was like, I can't move toward her. Okay. <clears throat> That's not why I'm here. You know that. Now listen, Jack, let's talk. There is a lot about yourself that you don't know, and I have the answers to it. She's going to back away a little bit as you move forward. Let's keep a comfortable distance now until we've discussed for a minute. Aren't you curious where you came from? I've got a pretty good idea. And he points to his eye and at her. But you're special. Why does it make you angry, my son? Why does it... You... What you did to my father? How could that... Why are we even talking about this? She I looks don't know pretty you sour. I, your father was a terrible man, Jack. Horrible, horrible man. There are things you don't know about him either. And there are great things you don't know about yourself. Do you know. know what you're destined for? I know you're here to kill me. But maybe you should reconsider, because you're going to need a guide. Big things are going to happen to you, and you're not going to know how to handle them, Jack. I've handled myself just fine this far. He takes what? a step toward her again. She kind of uh, looks a little bit sad. She doesn't step away this time. You don't want to kill an old woman who just loves you, do you, Jack? 
love? This is not... You don't know the first thing about love. You left me on a doorstep with a dagger wrapped in my blanket. At least I don't... Say whatever you want about my father. At least he took care of me. Uh, as you're talking to her, the moon suddenly just disappears and the whole clearing turns back to daylight. Uh, she looks up at the sky. You just killed a coven of moon hags. They were going to sacrifice me for a nefarious purpose to fuel their power. Do you think that makes you a hero, Jack? I did what I had to do. And now I'm going to finish what I came here to do. Jenny, your stomach starts to feel horrible. Just like a sharp, piercing pain as if you had just been stabbed. I don't. Something's wrong. What are you doing? Stop. Uh, the hag looks over nervously at her. Oh, no. What do you mean, oh, no? Oh, dear. S stop dear. this. How long were you conscious for? What did you overhear them speaking about? Dude. And she's gonna try. She's gonna take a step towards Ginny. Mm, his sacrifice, sacrifices, and um, you. What? Did that's... you hear any incantations? Yeah, maybe a little. Did they talk about any sigils? What? Did they mention any names? I, this is a lot of words for pain. I maybe. Uh, she looks nervously over at Jack. Jack, I, I need your help. Quickly, do you have... Uh, and then she crumples over and starts groaning. Ow! Oh no. I'm afraid that you're not going to be the one to end me, Jack. No. No, I have to. It's too late for me. They've done this to me. Do you know what I actually named you? Your name's not Jack, you know. Jack kneels down over her with his dagger, but his hand's, like, shaking. And he doesn't quite know what to do. It's too late. If it'll make you feel better, then just do it. But it's not going to be your doing one way or the other. What are you talking about? What's happening? She's I do an not... arcana. Yeah, go ahead. Actually, this will be a religion. Ooh, I can do religion. I'm trained. May I make a check as well? Uh, yeah, for sure. 26. Painfully average, once again. Yes. You are not sure. A 31, 31. from Jack? A 31. You uh, are... You, you do know what's going on here. So they have been... They've already had a sacrifice begin. They did a ritual on these two, and there was a moon seed planted in both of them to trigger the sacrifice. And now that the moonlight is gone, it is causing a poor reaction with the sacrifice, and it will probably be lethal within minutes. No. Looks what, like Ginny has I... the same symptoms. What do I do? I, I, I can get it out. Do you have any way to cast moonlight upon me? Jack looks desperately at Krunk. Oh, you, you me... got, you have magic. You... <sighs> Please. Let me look through my spell She puts book. a hand on your shoulder uh, as you turn away. I named you. And then there's just a loud pop and then another loud pop. And Ginny and your mother just absolutely explode into gore and viscera. It covers your face, it covers Krunk, and it just kind of falls down like a red mist over the area. No. No, 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 no. This is not... This isn't... This can't be how it happens. What am I supposed to do now? He's looking at Krunk. With uh, his non-transformed hand, Krunk is going to gently place it on Jack's shoulder and give him a comforting squeeze. 
damn it. And he Sorry. stabs the knife into the spot where his mom exploded. I'm so sorry, Jack. There's still a trickling mist of blood falling down from the sky, almost like a light rain or snow. And you can see this clear beam of sunlight shining through it that kind of makes the blood swirl and look kind of almost magical as it reflects off of the sunlight. And you can see falling down from the blood as that sunlight catches your eye. You can see there are two little rectangular pieces of parchment that are just floating down out of nowhere. They almost look like leaves at first, but as they get closer to the ground, they almost look like cards that are falling from the sky. Two of them. What's that? Jack will go over to look then. As you get close enough to almost grab it as it's falling down, there's a strong gust of wind and the cards split ways and swirl around a little bit. And one of them sticks right to Jack's blood-soaked cheek. One of them sticks on to Krunk's armor. Krunk, the card that you pull off of your armor, a little bit of blood smudged on it. Though it seems to have a pretty impressive sealant over the card, maybe even magical. It comes off and cleans off very easily. It is a beautifully decorated Haro card. Haro decks are fortune-telling devices and card games across Galerion. A lot of people have a lot of different beliefs of them. Some people think they define the future. Some people think they're nonsense. Uh, But yours looks like this crunk. It's called the Paladin. It is a knight in bright golden armor with a glowing golden sword and a flowing white cape, shield on his back. And Jack, the one that you pull off of your cheek, is the Rabbit Prince. And yours looks like this. It is a rabbit standing on hind legs paw on his hip, the other paw holding a broken sword, wearing a little crown on his head and an hourglass turning over. What? I haven't seen these kinds of cards before. Why did they drop just now? I don't know what any of this means. Strange fortunes haunt your steps, Jack. Yeah. Well, I thought I was about to fix that. But, uh, it seems like my road is going to be longer than I thought. Kronk hesitates for a second, contemplating that, um, before looking down at Jack, who just seems so despondent. Well, if you need help dealing with this road that has zagged when you thought it was clearing, I would be willing to offer my aid. He holds a hand over to Jack to shake. Uh, I don't know if this was all not clue enough, but you probably don't want to get tangled up with the likes of me. Plus, I don't think I have enough gold to pay you what you're actually worth. Then we will figure out a loot sharing situation. But we found each other for a reason, Jack. Let me help you for a time. Well, I could clearly use all of that that I can get. And he'll stand and shake your hand. I don't know where we're going next or where any of this leads. But uh, I might make a suggestion. Sure. Let's return to Absalom. Absalom. Let's research these cards, see if we can figure out what these moon hags were trying to do. Yeah. 
All right. Um, is there anything left of my mother, Chase, in the... Uh, not her body, I assume, but just <laughs> any any uh, tokens or items or anything? So there is her flowing green dress that she was wearing. And then there is also in the pool of blood, there's now a stained red little rabbit's foot on a chain. Jack will kind of uh, nod to Krunk and say, uh, uh, I just need a, a moment. That's all right. Take all the time you need. And uh, he'll he'll just spend a good minute or so just standing in silence over the rags and the rabbit's foot. Uh, and Crunk, you see him hesitate a couple times with the knife and finally shakes his head and he cuts off a piece of the dress and just stuffs it into his pocket and takes the rabbit's foot and uh, then without another word just starts stalking off toward Absalom walking back with a different purpose this time all right, as you guys head back through the woods, back towards Absalom. Meanwhile, somewhere out, or cannot be known, who knows where, the middle of a field somewhere. Uh, Ginny. Is it Ginny? It sounds wrong. It feels wrong in your mind as you wake up. The name sounds familiar, but it starts slipping away like a memory that you can't quite hold on to. Like a dream that you just woke up from and is fading away. Uh, but you open your eyes and you see around you is nothing but just an open field. You can see wheat around. You can see an old broken farmhouse that looks like it's been torn down recently. And you're back vaguely where you just remember being. You were tied to some sort of post, some sort of wooden cross. Your hands are bound. And uh, in front of you, you can see that there is... Just littered pieces of armor and weapons, as if some sort of battle just happened here. Appears to maybe be a town guard and some bandits. Just corpses left and maybe a ruined farmhouse. And in front of you there's a shield, a steel shield, and in it you can see a reflection. But the reflection doesn't look familiar looking back at you. Why don't you describe what you look like? Uh, so the reflection shows a set of glowing orange eyes reflected back in a, a skull. Um, underneath the skull is a scarecrow's body with tattered clothing on it, patches everywhere, um, straw coming out. Um, and bald right now, nothing on the head. It's just all very skeletal and looks a little freaky. With mismatched shoes and uh, looks like been out in the sun for a very long time and everything feels clothy. Excellent. The reflection looks surprising yet familiar at the same time. And uh, you realize after a while that you're pretty weakly bound to this cross. You're able to wiggle your wrist just a little bit and let yourself down. And as your feet touch solid ground, it feels hard to stand up for a moment. Like your legs don't feel quite right, like you remember. Uh, but notably, right below your, your bony neck, you can see that there's something tucking out of your, your uh, leather chest piece or whatever you're wearing. There's some sort of card. Uh, you also have a, a Haro card. Yours is the Empty Throne. Yours looks like this. There is what appears to be a crying king or queen with long flowing blonde hair, a golden crown that they're wearing on their head, and above them is a spectral blue crown of sorts and uh, falling autumn leaves of orange. It's just tucked in there. 
right in your chest piece. And uh, as you look at the card, and also off back in the woods, Jack and uh, Crunk, as you guys are walking back, all of you here, all three of you hear just a loud ringing in your ears. Your vision starts to blur and you feel kind of dizzy. And then it's like memories just start rushing through your mind. Memories of your past, realities of your present, and fears and hopes for your future suddenly overwhelm you with a torrent of emotions. So many choices you've made, so many more to go. Do they even matter? Are your choices yours, or are they always what you choose? Do you have a fate that's set in stone, or do you get to decide your future? Suddenly, you're standing on a street corner, one you somehow know in the Grand Bazaar within the city of Absalom. Before you is a wooden building flanked by a flower shop and an opened-air meat vendor. You can smell the flowers mixing with the meat smells. You can hear the bustling crowds. A sign above the building's door reads, Three moves ahead, and deja vu washes over you. You've never been there, or have you? Will you? Should you? A blood-curdling scream shatters the building, and after a brief sense of pain and loss, the vision fades. As your senses return, you realize that clutched in your hand is your brand new card. Whether you were holding it or not, it's back in your hand. A single, beautifully illustrated Haro card. You remember just finding it. It washes over you like a memory that just is as clear as day. You almost relive the moment that you remember grabbing it off of your face, off of your armor, out of your tucked uh, armor vest. And uh, now that you hold it, you feel like your fate's been tied for a very long time. It's a feeling that washes over you, a sense of knowing that something bigger is at play. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what we do and you want to see more, please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Or if podcasts are more your thing, find the audio version of this show on the Level 1 Geek podcast on your favorite listening platform. If you'd like to show your support, you can find links to our website, Discord, and Patreon in the description below. Now go take a long rest, drink plenty of water, and we'll catch you next time.